I, I don't know where y'all want to start on it, but I'm telling y'all, like, when you come, anybody else listen to this, when you listen to these five tracks, it's going to be the easiest, quick listen that you're going to do, that you're going to go throw back on repeat again. So, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Let me say it is Black is crazy with the features. Like, that's why I trust him with oh, my no, verses. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, he, goes, he goes out and get people, like, to send him these verses, and he be putting them in places to, to make it sound dope. So, it has to be something like specific for me to be telling him to change some shit. That's why I said that earlier. Like, I trust him with my shit because he, he look at the people he got. Like, you know what I mean? And it's more to come. It's crazy. Also, kind of produce as well. Even if I buy beats, I still like change how the beat is arranged and sounds and stuff like that. Like, I do everything myself, and I do everything myself from an iPhone at that. Damn. Oh, that that's how easy it is, man. Sometimes that's <laughs> yeah, how what easy I'm it is. I mean, they got it so easy yeah. nowadays. Just like simple with a DM link up, you know. You you ain't yeah. gotta go like know somebody to know somebody. Be be like, yeah. nah. It's just like, hey, I heard this music and it's it's there. So hey, just reach out, and reach out. Hey, that's, well, that's like that's I said. I only heard like I only listened to forty three seconds of that nigga, and that immediately caught me. I was like, all right, that's all I need to hit. <laughs> I, like I know what he's about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This nigga nice. Same yeah, with, and, and, and same uh, with us. Same, same at the with end us. Of the day, uh, yeah. At the end of the day, you you gotta be dope. Like like um, if black shit wasn't hard, I'm not taking the money. Like we not doing no features. So you gotta be dope. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Mutual mutual respect is important, man. Because lending yeah. lending your name to some whack shit, you know, I'm liable to hop in your DM and like this this was all right. Your verse was all right, but never do it again. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but yeah, that's that's dope, man. But let's let's hop into the project itself, man, and we'll kind of dive into both of you guys' catalog a little bit. Welcome back, people. This is Don't Sleep on the Couch podcast. I'm your boy, Mr. Prez, and with me always. It's your boy, Cash, a.k.a. Exec P. What's happening, people? What's happening? It's good. Cash, real quick, for the new people who never heard of us, don't know what we do, can you please exp- enlighten them? Too easy, too easy, Prez, man. This is Don't Sleep on the Couch podcast, a podcast about music, sports, entertainment, culture, each and every week, that's what you can count on. We have entrepreneurs, we have rappers, we have R&B singers, you name it, people of the culture that are doing great things out in the community. So mainly we talk about music and sports. So that's what you can guarantee and hang your hat on each and every week when you tune in with us. So tap in, tap in. All right. So uh, what we got today? Man, we got a, we got a dope interview, like you said, man. Um, we we always bring it in and putting it on for the culture, like you say, every, every episode. So... We love bringing on new artists. One of the artists that we have on, and Patty Hancho, he's he's been on the couch before, so he's coming back. But this time, we have a newcomer to the couch. Maybe you guys know him, Black Chidori. So we got two dope artists. I think you guys are going to love their music. I'll, I'll, I'll spare you out a long, drawn-out, you know, intro. Let's just bring them to, this, to the couch, Prez. How about that? Tell them to come on. Hey, Let's go. Yeah, bring them on. Bring them on. All right, what's going on, fellas? How y'all doing? What's good, good, what's good, y'all? Good what's to up, be back. Up? Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah. It's been a while, Patty. It's been a while. Facts. Yeah. He stepped it up a little bit. He got a, a, a nice little mic yeah. little set up right <laughs> in, the, in the house and everything. Trying hey. to be, gotta be more prepared, you know what I mean? Got to step the <laughs> shit up. Yeah. For sure, for sure. <laughs> he's, grow, he's growing a lot, man, since, since the last uh, pod, man. But we'll get into that, but... Again, for the first time, man, Black, well, welcome to the show, man. Oh, what up? Peace, God. I appreciate you having me on here. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm... No doubt, no doubt. Hey, we'll get right to the shits, man, because we don't like to waste people's time. So, with that said, man, guys, introduce yourselves a little bit for the people that don't know you, where you from, you know, how long you've been doing the rap shit, and just, you know, we'll kind of go from there. Uh, kick it off, Black. I will. Uh, my name Black Shadori. You know what I'm saying? I'm 19 now, but I've been rapping since 17. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming out of, you know, Virginia. You know what I'm saying? Williamsburg type area, Newport News, Portsmouth area. You know what I'm saying? All right. 
Patty. Patty Honcho from Patterson, New Jersey. I'm 23. I've been rapping since I was nine. Probably releasing music since like 15. And, you know, we, we make dope shit only. It's basically that's it. <laughs> With that said, that. fellas, man, I typically like to, you know, really go right out there and ask the question and whoever wants to start it off can. But what what's your reason for doing what you do as far as rapping? Um, so pretty much like I kind of used like before I really started rapping like that, I was in school, like writing funny poems, you know what I'm saying? And shit like that. And then like, I'll go from writing poems to then I'd be inspired to just, you know, come up with a dope line each day. And so each day I try to pin out at least one really dope line. And then that later evolved after I had heard um, a King Lowe's freestyle. And that really inspired me to start, you know, freestyling. I didn't really take writing or rapping seriously until I came across an artist by the name of Mickey Fax. And I heard a track by him named uh, Mickey Fax versus Styles P. And that really, you know, made me want to take like being an MC seriously, like want to write out lines and schemes and punchlines and start recording myself. For sure, for sure. So was a lot of the King Low stuff just, you know, regular his regular rap or was it like the battle bars or anything no, like was, that added was, on to um, it? It was actually, it was a freestyle he had on Sway in the Morning, that shit where he said, I'm hotter than the devil and then beat it and let it with, you know what I'm saying? Like that joint, like during that time, that was like, real hot like everybody was making vines off of it and shit like that so i was like yo i want to try to you know emulate some fire shit like that i want to freestyle so dope people constantly quote it for sure for sure all right patty what about you what about you so basically uh the question was the reason why i do this right right so like I mean, uh, hip hop affected me, the culture, the whole culture, not even just rapping, uh, the whole culture affected me so much. Like, I wanted to make my mark on that same culture as well. And it's funny, Black say that because I feel like most artists or writers, rappers, they start ra writing when it's uh, it's not even raps at first. Like, I started writing short stories before raps and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it usually happened like that. but. I mainly just want to make my mark on this culture. Like it's this culture is the most inspirational culture of all cultures. So like, you know. Yeah. Man, so, speaking so, of uh, ahead, uh, Black Chidori, that's a unique name. Like uh, to tell us a little origin about around that name. Like where does that come from? What is how'd you come about that? So um most people, you know what I'm saying, you know, rightfully are right to assume that it came from an anime. Um, cause at first, before I was really calling myself Black Chidori, I was calling myself the Black Dr. Doom, but you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to, you know, steal MF Doom's swag. So it came to a point where my uncle, who he was a professional DJ out in BK for many, many years. Um, you know what I'm saying? He had radio shows, all types of different stuff. He was, you know, kind of schooling me in my early period of recording as an artist. And he had told me to, you know, come up with a name that is so unique. I'm the only person that's really going to have a name like that. And that once I like really hone it and embody that name, you know what I'm saying? It could become a household name that's very original. So he had, you know, inspired me to, I already had black in my name, but he was like, you should do a unique spelling to it. That's what made me spell it with the Q, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, the Chidori part, at the time, you know what I'm saying, like when I really first started recording myself, I was like 13, 14 years old. So I was just coming up with like the first thing that came to my head because he had asked me, what's your favorite TV show? At that time, it was Naruto. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, boom, I'm a picture Dory. I didn't really give any identity to the name until I dropped my debut album at 16, 17 years old. And, you know, the whole Chidori aspect because that's a move created by Kakashi. Kakashi is known as the copycat ninja, which means he could do any and every style in jutsu that's on the show. 
So I'm like, okay, I want to be the Kakashi of hip hop that you can never box me in. I want to be so versatile. I can do any and everything. And that, and that you all, and we'll, we'll get, we'll get into that as well. Um, Patty, man, same question to you. I got my name on a shroom trip. The first time I ever did shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I, I kept that shit for some reason. And I never seen no other, like the variation of Patty and Hancho together, how I have it. I never seen it ever. Like I'm the only one. So I kept it. I was, I, I, I uh, contemplated changing my name so many times after I started seeing like more honchos, like rappers and shit. But when I made the name, I promise you, not even Quavo was calling himself Hancho. Like, and I, he he spells it differently. But I was mad young when I did that shit. But anyways, like, uh, yeah, I contemplated changing it so many times. Like, I was dead going just call myself Patty. I would say on the screen right there. Like, but I kept it. You know. Dope, dope. So, man, we got so so much to get into, prayers, man, because this is right up your lane. I I, I know this, man, because yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of the bars these guys were spitting. You know me, I'm a fake comic book head. I'm I'm fugazi as hell. So the shit would <laughs> over my head. <laughs> over my head. So yeah. we'll we'll get into some of the, the cover art, man, because the cover art on a lot of your projects, black if people don't know, is very extravagant, is um very out there and it's dope at the same time. It definitely yeah. would catch your eye to make you be like, damn, what is on this this project? So for you guys, um, before we get into the cover art, that is, what made you guys kind of join forces and and get together and start kind of working on some stuff together? So how it happened was it was around the time I was developing my um, my EP Ragnarok, and that was kind of like my first time, you know, getting into you know Twitter as an artist. And starting to network and, you know, learn about more artists who I really didn't know were out here like that. You know what I'm saying? So I came across his page, I think, because we had mutuals. And so I went and I was looking at his page. And mind you, I didn't listen to any of his music before that. But I was seeing him, like I was seeing his album promoted. But I hadn't gone and listened to it because I didn't know who he was at the time. So I checked out his page and I watched like 43 seconds of young red man clip that he had as his pin tweet. And I just immediately DM'd him from there. I was like, yo, uh, we need to start working on some shit like me and you, you know what I'm saying? Like I was telling my dad about it. I was like, yo, like this nigga, like you ever heard of this dude, Patty Hunt from New Jersey, da, da, da. He was like, nah, who that? Whoop de whoop. And so I was like, yo, so I, I came to him in a DM. I was like, yo, like how much for like four or five tracks? He was like 400. I was like, bet, I'm going to bring you that like in the next two days. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we need a link, we need to work. And then we just been tight since then. Sure. Right. Good story, good story. So, yeah. damn. Oh, that that's how easy it is, man. Sometimes that's, <laughs> that's how easy it is. I mean, they got it so easy yeah. nowadays. Just like simple with a DM link up, you know. You you ain't yeah. gotta go like know somebody to know somebody. Be be like, yeah. nah. It's just like, hey, I heard this music and it's it's there. So hey, just reach out and reach out. Hey, that's, well, that's like that's I said, cool. I only heard like I, said, I only listened to forty three seconds of that nigga, and that immediately caught me. I was like, all right, that's all I need to hear. <laughs> I like I know what he's about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This nigga nice. Yeah, like at the end of, same with us. Same, same at the with end us. Of the day, uh, yeah. At the end of the day, you you gotta be dope. Like like um, if black shit wasn't hard, I'm not taking the money. Like we not doing no features. So you gotta be dope. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Mutual mutual respect is important, man. Because lending lending your name to some whack shit, you know, I'm liable to hop in your DM and like this this was all right. Your verse was all right, but never do it again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but yeah, that's that's dope, man. But let's let's hop into the project itself, man, and we'll kind of dive into both of you guys' catalog a little bit. So, um, Blood Blix presents Black Blood and Tears. So, tell me mm -hmm. tell me about the cover art. I'll kind of go back to that, and then we'll we'll move in, into some of more of the tracks. So, 
basically because like i make all of my own cover art like i make all of my own cover art. i engineer all of my own shit you know what i'm saying i curate as well you know what i'm saying shit like that I also kind of produce as well even if i buy beats i still like change how the beat is arranged and sounds and stuff like that like i do everything myself and i do everything myself from an iphone at that um so when me and patty had first linked because when I first listened to him, I was like, he kind of gave me like room streets type of vibes, shit like that. So I was like, I want to make a project that's me and him that's like going to be an iconic, an iconic collab. Like how Ransom had director's cut with Nicholas Craven. I wanted me and Patty to have some shit like that to where we speak to your soul, we speak to the streets. And we speak to the culture as well. And so, you know, um, I spent a lot of time looking for a producer who could properly embody the vision that I had for me and Pat. And so, you know, I linked up with Blood Blicks. And so I had to first, you know, study him and his sound before he started sending me beats. And when I was studying him, I was seeing A, his name is Blood Blicks, B, he had a lot of, you know what I'm saying, like cover art where it had people with like the, you know, the red flag mask on shit like that. So I was like, hmm, let me think of a way to kind of incorporate blood into it somehow, some way, but still get give that Black Shidori type of look. So I went and I seen this um, artwork of Vampirella. So I went and I was like, okay, I could take that and I could flip it to some hot shit. We're going to call this shit black blood and tears, like blood, sweat and tears. But instead of tears like the tears down your face, it's going to be tears like levels. Nice. Nice, man. So, I mean, clearly you you a man with a vision, but of course it takes two to tango with, with Patty, man. Like yeah. just with, with this being your first time and I'm interested to know because for me, man, you know, I'm very hands on with anything I do, whether it's the podcast, whether it's music, you know what I mean? So how was, how was the, just working in a group this time and just le- kind of letting go and letting Black lead the way in terms of just finding the production and artwork and stuff like that? How do you guys work work that out? And, and make sure y'all be honest too, man, because hey, we work as a group. We know shit ain't always sweet over. Oh, yeah, yeah. We be always practicing and then, nah, that shit's whack. Oh, don't do not do an intro like that. <laughs> so, like, honest, painfully obvious. Uh, mm-hmm. Not obvious, but honest with each other. Nah, yeah, at the beginning, I'm not going to hold you. I was like, all right, we just going to do these songs, these four tracks, and that, that, that'll be it probably or whatever. And then we we started talking more and more, and I was like, all right, this nigga cool. Like, at first, I didn't even know he was that young. And then he told me his age. I said, "Oh, nah, this young nigga. Cool. I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be cool with this nigga, like for 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 a minute. Like, you know what I mean, we gonna do this rap shit together." And it was, it wasn't no conflict, like as of where, like I need you to put this there in the third. But if I told him, if I told him I needed something, how I needed it, like I just tell him it wasn't. And then he take it good and do what he got to do. Like it's not like he gonna be like, "Nah, this my shit. This how I have to do it. Whatever. It's no conflict. We just we work together well." So. I, I I'm I'm not I don't hold nothing back like I just tell you like because especially with music I want shit done how I feel like it's gonna be done because in my head I got the best way in my head it's, this is going this sounds the best so yeah he he got he he know he like to take uh constructive criticism he take it well oh yeah man I mean. The thing with that that is, man, like I think it takes a lot of trust, man. So when you see some person or anybody like really just really taking the lead like that is it you just got to be comfortable at some point to. But when they're taking constructive criticism, that makes it a lot easier. That means the ego is out the window and y'all work y'all working on the best product, you know, possible and stuff like that. So, but yeah, that's that's dope, man. So um, let's talk about some of the features, man. J.D. Era. Timbo King, MOB, and and King James. Which where, where do you want to start first, Prez? What what, what track you want to get into? Uh, let's start with uh the the hold on, the hold on, man. I, I thought that would track, mm-hmm. man. Like y'all, y'all like so. 
Cash, Cash sent me these uh, a couple of weeks back, and I was like listening at them, man. And I was just like, he was like, I think you're really gonna like these guys, man. And and hey, wasn't wrong with like hearing this uh, initially uh, off jump, and then like that made me go back into the catalog uh, uh, for uh, for Black Dory and like listening at a couple of his, and I was like, okay, I see where they coming from. They have some of the deep like uh, culture or, or, or deeper. Like, comic book references and stuff up in there and like hey, hey I'm, i go down that lane so i kind of get a couple things like i think well, i can't remember which which uh song it was on but y'all threw a line out there about madeline prime like okay man they talking about a clone with madeline prime who oh yeah you know yeah that that was that was you were you must have been listening to the black album yeah, 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 yeah. And I was yeah, like, oh, man, he's, yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah. you got to actually kind of know this stuff, man, to actually know if you're throwing out that. I mean, most people would yeah, talk yeah. a clone would just try clone saga or something like that, just try to be. Yeah. But I was like, oh, no, he's going for the deeper in the culture. I'm like, OK, Black Chidori already going with like some of the the anime kind of influences and stuff like this and like just only your space and stuff that you're in, man. So like uh, <laughs> which a lot of like uh like uh, the underground artists that I grew up on, like used to use a lot of those references and stuff. Like you're saying MF doom and stuff like those deeper cuts and mm -hmm. things up in there. Uh, uh, Feral Munch, you throw a bunch of them up in there too. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but then I was like, yeah, man, I, I really, I'm really like riding with these guys, man. Like this is, this is some good shit. Like I uh, Patty already was on and he, we, he kind of already knew. And then like, so I was like, catch, yeah, yeah, we get definitely got to seal this up. Make sure you get them both on here so <laughs> we can come on and yeah, do yeah. this. But yeah, from hold on though, man, like that was just like uh, it's kind of like the intro to y'all on here, man. And it was a uh, it was nice little setup and everything. And then I think Splendid when it got into Splendid, man, like just adding a little bit more onto it. And then man, I think it was it was only a five track EP. And then when it came to like uh the the last one, Royal Blood, man, when y'all had everybody kind of featured on there and y'all just like yeah. it was like <laughs> man, just gave me reminiscent of just like that that ultimate team up there where y'all just came there and just slaughtered the track. Everybody like taking their turns with it, man. It was it was it was dope shit. So like I don't know where y'all want to start on it, but I'm telling y'all, like, when you come, anybody else listening to this, when you listen to these five tracks, it's going to be the easiest, quick listen that you're going to do that you're going to go throw back on repeat again. So, <laughs> for, sure, for sure. Let me say it is Black is crazy with the features. Like, that's why I trust him with oh, my yeah. verses. <laughs> yeah, because he goes, he goes out and get people, like, to send him these verses, and he be putting them in places to make it sound dope. So, it has to be something like specific for me to be telling him to change some shit. That's why I said that earlier. Like, I trust him with my shit because he, he look at the people he got. Like, you know what I mean? And it's more to come. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're familiar with JD. I'm familiar with JD era, and uh, of course King James, who we've had on quite a few times, yeah. or, or whatever. So, I mean, back in the day, man, I remember um, you know making a project, and and dudes weren't. They weren't as collaborative as they are now. And it wasn't like the thing to reach out, you know. So what in you guys' opinion, like this collaborative era, what what makes you guys want to work together? Because black, like like you said, you got a lot of people. I mean, I was going to write down the names, but I remember a few off the top. You know, you got the, the remix project that you had. Um, you got JR. You got King James, like, like you said, JD era, um, Mickey Fax. Uh, I think you've even rapped with nature before, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So like what, what makes you just be more collaborative as opposed to just doing your own thing and continuing to build your own brand? Well, cause on some real shit, I've like, I've released a lot of my own solo projects. So I've been doing my own solo shit. It wasn't until I had an experience where I met, with um rj payne's producer larry tan and larry tan you know what i'm saying he 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 gave me a lot of gems like i got a notebook full of notes from because he's a consultant you know what i'm saying so i got a notebook full of game that he gave to me on how i can work the way anyone i want to you know what i'm saying like he taught me how to do that and so once i learned that i was sitting there like yo all these people that I grew up listening to, 
who I know my own, my own peers, because I still, you know what I'm saying, acknowledge I'm a young person, even though I don't make music for the younger demographic or anything like that. Um, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I know a lot of my peers don't know about some of these people that I grew up listening to. Like I grew up on, you know, nature, J.R. Ryder, you know what I'm saying? J.D. Era, you know what I'm saying? All, all those people who I've done features with that are like legends in the game, I grew up with them. So I was sitting there like, yo, now that, you know, Larry gave me the game on how to do it, if all it takes is proper respect and the right price, then I'm a powerful motherfucker. I'm gonna go and get anyone I want. Yeah. I'm going. I'm a, I like my plan is to work with everybody that I ever grew up listening to that I really like respect like that because I want the smoke with them. You know what I'm saying? That's the real. That's the real shit. Like I wanna. Like I wanna eat them on the track. That's that's my whole goal. That's see, Prez. That's exactly what I was talking about the other day, right? Like you should want people to get on your your track right. and try to smoke you. Like that's yeah. the era we from. And then even if you get smoked. Like it makes for a great song, you know exactly. what I mean? Because just like the uh, recent song that just came out with Benny and, and Cole, everybody yeah. kind of going back and forth who had the better oh, verse. Yeah. But yeah. overall, oh. you can't really lose. We know who had the better verse. You got to make a decision. You know, and, and, you know that's yeah. neither here nor there how you feel. But at the end of the day, both came with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it made for a great collaboration. So I think more that's people right. should should think like that but you know there's a lot of funny shit that happens though behind the scenes in terms of nah, diversity changing and, and, and shit facts, like that that's, that's, that's definitely that's, that's facts. <laughs> I've, I've had my own personal bad experiences working with artists like there were certain artists who were supposed to be on the ragnarok project that i've had to replace due to you know what i'm saying bad business experiences with them and they were people i looked up to unfortunately so you know that that definitely put a bad taste in my mouth yeah, I mean, I can't industry, tell you how many times. Industry time. shit. Yo, oh, yeah, industry it, shit. It'd be, it be that industry shit for sure. It'd be that industry shit for sure. But at the same time, like, I haven't really let those bad experiences really, like, put a dampening on my ambition for the for the, um, for the the music, nor working with people, because I'm still open to working with any and everyone that I feel I personally respect until they do something that shows me I can't respect them. I'm not going to be afraid to, you know, reach out to them or try to work with them or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? And at the very same time, you know, again, my whole goal is to, you know, get the smoke with niggas. You know what I'm saying? And it's right. a great experience, like, working with different people and getting the smoke with certain niggas. Like, I'm not going to front that Ragnarok project, you know, working with all those different people. It was It was a boost for me. Like I haven't been rhyming the same since because the fact that while working on it, I had a lot of those legends and people that I looked up to pen wise telling me, mm, let me rewrite my shit or let me get a little more time. I'm sitting there like, damn, I'm that nice to where I make you feel like that. That's some crazy shit. Cause <laughs> I was like, I wasn't yeah. myself in that aspect. Like I was looking at them like they, they all the way up here. Like I was just surprised I'm even working with them. You know what I'm saying? But then them giving me that proper respect, you know what I'm saying, was, you know, a, you know, some good a good feeling, you know. Yeah, fact. That's tough. I ain't know that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's <funny. laughs> I'm not. I'm not oh, gonna you, say like the niggas' names or nothing nah, like cool. Nah, 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 like, nah. Like, that, like that. But you know, yeah. Certain niggas had to rewrite. Shit. Certain niggas had to rewrite shit. <laughs> So uh, you talk about ambition, like, and you saying where you want to go, like, what, what's, what's the plan? What's the end goal? I mean, you're young in it right now. So like, where do you want to, where do you want to continue to go? Um, I want to go to the top until I touch God and then I want to become God. Hey man, I love this dude. (laughs) (laughs) This man rapping in the interview. I feel you. I feel you. The sky (laughs) is, sky is the limit like i'm 19 and i already feel like like i'm 19 i already feel like if i wanted to the people who i look up to it's not going to take that long for me to get to that level and i'm already only 19 you know what i'm saying most say like a rapper's peak is like in their 30s or 40s whatever so i'm really excited to see what i'm going to sound like what i'm going to be doing once i reach that age you know what i'm saying 
So I got I, I mean, got old man brain. They, they they take they taking that down now, man. Like uh, yeah, yeah. it used to be like you would say 30, 40, like up in there, but I mean just like with the way Nas, Jay, and all of them continue just continue on doing what they doing, like I think that's just kind of taken down, man. I don't know what's up with that whole little generation. Tom Brady don't want to fucking retire, and then now you got like all the rappers <laughs> that keep rapping to the age. <laughs> yeah, I love it, man. What, what says we gotta stop at a certain age? You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, exactly. Like I want to stop until, like, until I feel like I got nothing left to say, which is gonna be damn near impossible. I'm gonna keep rapping. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Patty, same same thing for you, man. Like, what are you um kind of looking forward to? moving forward and you guys working, working together and, and separately, what, what are some things that you're doing now? Yo, together, we got some great, I don't even want to, we're going to keep it on the low right now, but <laughs> we yeah. basically, I'll just say, um, we forming a group with a producer and I'll just leave it at that. Me, Black yeah. and a, another producer, we forming a two or two rappers in a producer group. And yeah. Uh, so I'm dropping a, a solo project in February, like either the second or third week. So, okay, uh, is this the I'm greenery join or? This is me and greenery, Brawler Five, Brawler Five is coming the, either the second or third week of February. I'm gonna give y'all a date, probably you know by the end of the week type shit. Yeah, yeah that's man, shit you're crazy. Two, you're two tracks on that on that last greenery uh, that that released this last week, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I get yeah, lost on that time. This is so much music, man. Like, yeah, but like, yeah, that that little thing was nice, man. Like, yeah, yeah, those started off in the end. Greenery, he got a lot of work, yo. We, me, wow. and him doing this, uh, we doing another one. Uh, this year, we we want to drop a black exploitation EP. It's based. It's going to be based on like you know the genre of black exploitation and the whole vibe. Uh-huh. It, it's that whole sound. It, okay. It's just, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to hear that because um, I think Nick Grant just did it, and I haven't stopped playing that joint, man. Because that that shit group, that it's a groove, man. man. Yeah, yeah that I was listening to that too. Fire, so Look, fire. Quite. Yeah, so you're gonna have like a black dynamite type. <laughs> <laughs> you over here tossing out ideas, man. Look, you look. Press it's, gonna on. More, it's gonna be more. It's gonna be more. It's gonna be more gritty, like you know. It ain't gonna be. It's gonna be gritty. So it's black. It's black exploitation, but it's still. It still got that grit in there. It still got that street shit. Like you know. Okay. Hey man, fellas, I want to um just run down the list of projects so people can kind of check it out because again, this is a five. Well, four track actually four tracks um song mm-hmm. EP. Um, just run down your projects uh, individually. And of course, everybody knows what you guys collectively, just some of the stuff that they can kind of go in your back catalog before we kind of move into the, you know, just asking you guys random questions about some of your tastes and music and stuff like that. So whoever wants to start with the catalog um, and where people can um, find it. I would recommend my debut album because I feel like that was a great introduction to not myself as an artist and what kind of artist I am, which is any type of artist. You know what I'm saying? Because like my debut album, it's got a standard version and a deluxe version. It's called the Black Album. And then the deluxe is, co- is a double album called the Black Album Superplex 2. Um, you know what I'm saying? That showcased a lot of versatility. You know what I'm saying? Like each track got conscious subject matter. But at the very same time, you know, you got trap shit, introspective shit, conscious shit. And then, you know, grimy boom bap shit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I will also recommend, um, if you like, you know, the taste of that old school posse cut type of Wu-Tang type shit, I recommend Ragnarok EP, you know what I'm saying? As the name suggests, it's a war of the gods, you know what I'm saying? And guys are the, you know, guys are hip hop, you know what I'm saying? That's the one you can see me working with Nature, SAS, JR Ryder, 3D Nazi, Mickey Fax, you know what I'm saying? JR, King James. You know what I'm saying? Lots of great production on there. Uh, I got a project that I'm dropping in early February. It's an album. You know what I'm saying? It's called White Melodies. So be on the lookout for that. You know what I'm saying? I got a couple dope features. My nigga Patty on there. Um, you know what I'm saying? Twice. He's the only dude that I feature there, like twice the same person. Um, I got another posse cut that's on there. This time I'm working with Elzai 
and King James on that one. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Uh, <laughs> Elzai and that. King James on the same track? <laughs> I know, right? Okay. That's okay. going to be crazy because Elzai, Elzai came with it with JR, but, like, again, you know, it's right there, neck and neck, man. So I'm interested yeah. to, to hear something like that. Yeah. Uh, Patty, we'll toss it to you, man. What what, uh, what do you have coming up in some of your previous projects for people again? This nigga got Elzai and all these other <laughs> niggas. I know, right? All these legends. <laughs> uh, shit, I got, I got one project out on all platforms called Cherish the Hunger. JR up there, my boy 1-3 up there. He a monster. And if y'all want to hear my old shit, it's on SoundCloud, bro. The one through four. Uh, all them shit's fire. So, oh, yeah. but yeah, uh, cher- Cherish the Hunger. It's, it's, that's that's the one. If y'all want to, you know, get, really get to know me, just go go everywhere. DSPs, Cherish the Hunger. Oh, oh. All right. So y'all, y'all go check them out, man. What's you guys, before we kind of get into the fun questions, um, of the, you know, rapid fire part. Uh, where can people find you guys on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, wh- whatever you, you promote the most? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram with the at God MC Black Chidori. And then on Twitter, Young, capital G O D Chidori. And then you can find me on any digital streaming platforms under the name Black Chidori. All right, Patty. My Twitter is Patty underscore Honcho. My Instagram is Patty Honcho, just regular. And it's Patty Honcho everywhere. DSPs. Oh. All right. So we'll toss that aside. Y'all go check out those projects. Get in tune with the music. I can guarantee if you much like a comic book fan and into the, the deep cuts, this is going to be something that you that you definitely rock with. But staying y'all, in that y'all lane, host, y'all always host like Twitter Spaces and yeah, stuff like yeah, that's that what too. I was as well, say. right? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we every do Saturday, we do it every at Saturday mm-hmm. at nine PM Eastern. And they got uh, Know It All's the main host, and then me and Patty co-host. Mm-hmm. Ooh, shout, shout out to Know It All! Shout out to him. Facts. So, how has that Twitter Space helped you guys um, networking wise? I've hopped on you know a few that, times, but I'm I'm a little I'm about six hours ahead, so sometimes I just no you know got a snooze on it. But it the few times I hopped on, man, it's been real productive. It's crazy, like you you never know who gonna pull up. Honestly, like we was doing mm-hmm. the space, and it wasn't even the cipher space. It was like we was roasting people in the space. It should just be funny as hell. And mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> Quest Love came in there. The real Quest Love account came oh, yeah. pulled up. Yeah, man, it was, it was wild. We had like battle rappers like that been on URL come and just rap in the space and shit. Like, it's it's tough. So we just do them every week. We network. I'm sure Black doing got a lot of followers off there because I got hella followers. I done found a lot yeah. of people like producers yeah. and shit, the rappers. So it's definitely a good networking way to network. Yeah. Hey, hey, Quest gonna get y'all on the next Fallon show, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real. He was in there for wow. a little bit too. I was, I was like, Quest, I'm about to roast you, and then I was like, Nah, I'm playing. <laughs> Yo, but you got another another um space that you operate too, right, Patty? In terms of just, have you gotten that off the ground as far as the the comic book space? Yeah, we do the comic book space. I'll be trying to do them every Wednesday, but I'll be falling off because I I'll be recording so much, but. I try and do them every Wednesday, but I do have a, a comic space. I mean, a comic page, a whole comic page called Authentic Comics. And I would post comic news and superhero news all the time and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> that pile just going to grow with back issues that you're going to have to like still read, man. I get it won't stop, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, who do, who do you guys listen to outside of just you know, just rap, just rap stuff. Like, what do you listen to that people would normally probably identify with? Oh, Patty Black would typically listen that to I this mean, type of I'm music. I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be real. And this, like, I've noticed, like, with a lot of the people who are like real nice, like, this is a common thing. I really don't listen to hip hop anyway. Like, that's my least favorite genre of music. If I'm being real honest, like, I listen to a lot of um you know, 
60s, 70s punk rock. I listen to classical music a lot. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, I like those classic 60s to 70s, sometimes 80s uh, Motown records. You know what I'm saying? Soul music, a lot of that old, you know what I'm saying? Soulful shit and R&B shit. I like a lot of that. I listen to a lot of early 2000s, um, Neo Soul. You know what I'm saying? Like Erica Badu, Music Soul Child, Maxwell type shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What about you, Patty? Word. Uh, I definitely, R&B definitely like my favorite genre. Like, but rap, my second. I wouldn't say rap is my least favorite. Black bugging. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> R- R&B is definitely my favorite genre. I love, I listen to that shit all day. Right now, I'll give y'all some artists I'm listening to right now. I listen to Mariba all day long from Dreamville. She fired. Um, crazy. Like, I've been running, like, hella just old shit back, too. Like, black at the moment. So, like, real old, like, Sade, Anita Baker. And, like, yeah. just that old type of vibe. I've been on that, that, that 80s R&B wave, too. Late 80s, early That's 90s type shit. That's yeah, shit. so that's what I've been on really like outside of hip hop. Like, yeah. yeah. So why do you stay away from like the hip hop? Is it just because you don't want to be influenced by too much more out of it, or you you think that kind of mess with your uh actual your your art artistic uh, abilities or anything like that, or you you don't want to no, be like I a mean, lot of people always say you're trying to be oh he sounds similar to this and you don't want to never be associated like that. I mean, I'm gonna be real, like I'm gonna be real honest. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't like my life. I be having a lot of real shit going down. So I don't really have too much me time in the first place. And whenever I do get some me time, you know, I want to try to listen to, you know, sounds and music that I feel like, you know what I'm saying? is gonna, you know, soothe me and serenade me. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that hip hop can't because I, I i sit there and i listen to hip-hop you know what i'm saying shit like that but it's just you know i, I want to get serenaded when i get downtime too i respect it funny but i respect it <laughs> I respect <the> <laughs> hey yeah no nah, you gotta gotta have a hip-hop i no. like that's what like gets me up in my different moods like jumping yeah i, I feel them but like i am more so on r&b um than hip-hop you know, at times because it's so much to to comb through in tone in terms of rap and uh, you know, it's inevitable. A lot of people are gonna sound the same. Not saying they trying to, but it's just inevitable if you listen to rap as much rap as we listen to. Yeah. So I definitely understand that. So before I let you guys go, I know you mentioned some of the projects that you got coming um later on in the year. But just overall, man, fellas, just close us out with some of your your 2022 goals because we're still, you know, in February at this point. Um, You know, what were some of you guys' goals to close us out and uh, moving forward? I'm dropping at least four or five projects this year. That's like my main goal. And they all going to be with one producer. Every project I'm tapping in with one producer. A different one, though, like. Every project gonna be a different producer, but just one he doing the whole thing. So that's that's what I'm I'm planning on right now. I'm working on it. That's love, man. You always you always welcome back you and the producer uh, to break down. So don't don't hesitate to reach out when you got something coming, man. We we love to spread the word, man. What about you, Black? Um, my goals as far as the music goes. You know what I'm saying, um. I want to, I got a couple different, you know what I'm saying, projects, like even after that album, you know what I'm saying? I know I just mentioned the album, but I got a joint with Shamir that's coming out, you know what I'm saying? Then I got another joint with Ben Working that's inspired by A Space is the Place, that movie by Sun Ra, you know what I'm okay. saying? And then I got um, a couple other joints that I'm working on too, behind the scenes, but my whole goal really is just to, you know, hit people's radars and you know what i'm saying really make an imprint and show that this is my year you know what i'm saying show sure, man hey ambitious black doing it from an iphone so all you you people out there who say it's not possible with shit where there's a will there's a way i that shit just exactly. motivated me you know exactly. 
For sure, for sure. And Patty, man, like, again, man, you said Cherish the Hunger was the only project right now, but then you mentioned five moving forward. So mm-hmm. we're going to hold you to that goal where, you know, where, where's the music, man? You know what I'm saying? So when we look up about definitely. March, April, you know, mm-hmm. definitely going to randomly reach out like I know, I'm know i known to do to see, you know, see what's up, man. When was that second, third, fourth project coming? So I uh, wish you guys the best, man. Thanks for stopping by and, um, you know, rocking with us, man. So appreciate you guys. Appreciate no it always. No doubt, right. no doubt. So you guys definitely have uh, two additional fans in us. So anything we could do to help out, let us know, man. But with that said, man, this is the bonus episode. You know, don't sleep on the couch podcast. Y'all go check out Black Shidori, Patty Hancho, Cherish the Hunger. We're talking about Black Fiction, Black Fiction Director's Cut, Ragnarok, mm-hmm. and their mm-hmm. most latest project together called Blood Blix Presents Black Blood and Tears. So, you know, they trying to raise new levels, as Black says. Yeah, so, exactly. nice exactly. play on words, man. So, salute to y'all, fellas, man. We out, we out. Thank you. Peace, Peace God.